I've just been to Hollow Psalms or something. St. Luke chapter 22. If you read verse, verses 54 through 62, I'm going to read verse 31 through verse 34. And I'm going to look at, you've read 54th verse through the 62nd verse. And then flip over to verse Peter, the fifth chapter. We're going to read that just so that when I get to that spot, you, you'll know. Fifth chapter of the book of First Peter, six verse through the ninth verse. First Peter, chapter five, verse six says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. St. Luke chapter 22 verse 31. 31st verse says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison that joke is bad, ain't it? And to death. I'm ready to die for you. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou, that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Good God Almighty. That's all right, isn't it? 31st verse says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Kind of funny. The last time, did, didn't he? Didn't he change his change his name? He said, "Thou art Peter." But but this time he went back to Simon. Simon. Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as. Get your first name on your on your lip that quick now. Your first name, your first name. Okay? Your first name. So instead of saying Simon, Simon, you put your first name in there for Simon. I want you to hold these. I want everybody to say their first name now. I'm going to say Dwayne. You say whatever your first name is. And then we're going to finish the passage. We're not going to change the scripture. We're just going to apply our lives to what the book is saying. Because you can't change God's word. But I want to make sure that you don't think I'm just talking about Simon. You know, I want you to know that not only did he want Simon, he also want to get you. So, so you put your name in this particular spot. Y'all got me now? Okay, okay. And the Lord said, Dwayne, Dwayne, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may... Oh, uh, Lord have mercy. Oh, uh, Lord. From the subject today, Satan's desire and God's plan. With me. Satan's desire and God's plan. God's plan. Us may be seated. Satan's desire and God's plan. Thank God for the plan of God. Satan has a strong desire for the people of God. He has a hunger. He has a thirst 
for the people who receive God's word. He wants to use us to make a statement. He wants to get on the inside of us and make it because he, he started in the beginning of when, when, when God created everything and he had Adam and Eve in the garden. Satan came and attacked Adam and Eve, caused them to take of the forbidden fruit. That's the first Adam. Now Jesus steps on the scene, the second Adam. Now you have when Jesus, after his baptism, the Spirit led him up onto the mountain. And there, Satan attacked him as well. After the master had been there for, for 40 days and 40 nights to come down, Satan waiting on him to, to tempt him, to, to get him to do Satan's desire. And the Lord beat him. With the word of God saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And now I believe in this text that Satan realized that, that Peter was going to be a very prominent figure in the New Testament church. So he now has attacked Adam and, and jumped on the second Adam. Now he sees Jesus called 12 disciples and this one man that he's going to use, he decides, I better get hold of this joker right here. And so while Jesus going through teaching and, and, and preaching and get down to this last night, he turns to Peter. All the other ones there. But he turns to Peter and says, boy, Satan desires to have you. Now, that does, does, doesn't just mean just Peter because the you in here, the first time you hear it, is a plural. It means that he desired to have all of the disciples. But Peter, he has a, has, has, a, has a knack. He wants you because you're the one that's going to be used mightily by the Lord. So Satan trying to stop you. But I have prayed for you. And the same thing that he desired then, he desired to do the same thing to us. He wants to destroy us. He don't like the fact that you going to church and reading your Bible and trying to straighten up and doing what God. He don't like that. He want the old you. He want the one that say anything, do anything, don't care what. He want that person to come back. So he's doing whatever he can to convince you that that plan is the best for your life. Because he figures the only reason that you are serving God is because things are going pretty good for you now. So he has to throw some, some obstacles in your way. He got to throw things around. He got to, he got to allow things, and he, things come in your life and cause you trouble and trouble. And, and now he, he trying to tell God the only reason that he or she is following you because the, the road hadn't got bumpy yet. The road hadn't hit a block in the road yet but I tell you what if you let them start going through something you will see just how much praise you'll get and, 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 and the Lord has something called a, a permissive will that means he allows things to happen I understand why because he's not afraid of the devil God's not afraid, and God knows how powerful his word is. So he's not concerned about what Satan may be able to do. God is concerned with how we receive his word and how we apply the word we receive. Because he knows Satan is going to attack you. As a matter of fact, he's going to let Satan. Yes, he will. He will let Satan attack you. But, but, but you are not without power. He has empowered you so when Satan attacks you, you use what the Lord has given you to fight off what Satan has done. Because God got to prove something to that devil. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got to prove something. He got to prove that that word of his is so powerful in the hearts of men 